Hello everyone, this is Ask the Experts. When starting a full-fledged business in Japan, it is very important to establish a company in Japan as a base for localization and business development. For establishing the base, you need to proceed in accordance with Japanese laws and regulations. In this video series, experts in the field of incorporation will explain the advantageous information that foreign companies need to know when incorporating in Japan. Before getting into the main topic, I would like to briefly review the flow of setting up business in Japan. In general, starting a business in Japan requires preparation in five main categories. Setting up a business, obtaining visas, setting up an office, personnel related matter, and setting up a place for residence. In the process of setting up a business, after deciding on the form of the company, such as branch, joint stock company, etc., all the necessary preparations need to be completed according to the company form, and then the company is registered as a corporation. Once it is registered, tax and other relevant filings are made, a bank account is opened, and the business in Japan is launched. In addition, if there are people coming to Japan from their home country to conduct business, they will need to obtain visas. To do this, first determine the representative in Japan, and once the company is registered, apply for a certificate of eligibility and a visa. And then the person can obtain eligibility to reside and work in Japan after entry. Furthermore, depending on the nature and scale of the business, it is also necessary to select and secure personnel to work at the Japanese base. When concluding employment contracts with these workers, social insurance related notifications will be required as well. In many cases, other preparations are also necessary to start a business in Japan, such as setting up an office and a place of residence. In this episode, we will be focusing on company registration and visas. Experts will explain the topics that many foreign companies have questions about when establishing a base in Japan. Let me introduce Mr. Ida. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for having me today. So there are many processes that need to be conducted simultaneously. Mm. It is often <laughs> perceived that these processes are complicated and troublesome, but is this really the case? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, as you said, uh, many people uh, seem to have an impression that Japan has a lot of regulations. However, Actually, uh, Japan's regulation to set up an entity uh, is not so complicated and it is not difficult uh, to set up a base uh, in, in Japan. I see. That's very reassuring. Right. And I usually mention this uh, when meeting a foreign client for the first time uh, to encourage them uh, to enter into a Japanese market. Today, I will be explaining legal procedures of setting up a company in Japan. Let me start with a commonly asked question. Is regulation against foreign investment strict in Japan? No. In principle, Japan does not restrict foreign business to set up a company as a sole owner. There are a few exceptions, of course, that it is quite limited to specific industries like um, uh, defense industry, materials, or infrastructures in industry. I see. So when incorporating in Japan, is it necessary to appoint Japanese executives? Uh, no. Uh, you can set up a company without a uh, resident uh, director or Japanese director. I've heard uh, that some foreign con some con countries uh, has a requirement uh, of resident director. However, fortunately, Japan does not have such requirement. So an executive can be a non-resident? Right. The requirements for choosing an executive is not as rigid as I had expected. Uh, right. Uh, however, uh, it is necessary to consider uh, from a tax, from the tax or uh, social or insurance standpoint. According to a JETRO's labor and tax expert, working conditions or rules of bonus payment may be different from uh, the case of employees. So please check the tax and labor rules as well. 
It's important to take into consideration aspects of taxation and human resources management. Right. Although there are a few points you should check, it is an advantage uh, to th that you can uh, incorporate a company uh, without identifying Japanese director. I guess each company has its own policy and it is uh, advisable to consult Jetro to take advice of experts so that you can make the best decision of appointment of directors. Mm -hmm. I see, thank you. Moving on to the next topic, which is capital. How much capital is required to register a company in Japan? Uh, it is also a frequently uh, asked question. Uh, the minimum amount of capital used to be 10 million yen before the amendment of the corporate law. Mm -hmm. uh, however, now you can set up a company with only 1 yen capital. Uh, however, Japanese uh, people may assume uh, the size of your business in Japan uh, in accordance with your amount of uh, capital your company has. So it is not uh, advisable to start from 1 yen uh, capital. Uh -huh. So if a company has more capital, it may appear more trustworthy. Right. So the appropriate amount of capital varies depending on the size of your business or your industries, but it is common to put several million yen at the time of incorporation of a company. According to the tax advisor of Jetro, there may be some tax disadvantage for a large amount of, uh, amount of capital. So you need to consider various factors like size of your business, type of business, or visa requirements, or requirements for getting a business license. Another very important topic is status of residence. Mm. Could you briefly tell us the flow of how to acquire status of residence? Okay. First, you need to apply for a certificate of, of eligibility mm -hmm. at a uh, regional immigration services agency. The certificate of eligibility is a kind of pre-approval of your work, work visa, uh, ind indicating that you suffice all of the requirements for your work visa application. Once you get the certificate of eligibility, then the next step uh, is to go to the Japanese embassy or consulate abroad to apply for your work visa. And then you will come to Japan and usually at the airport uh, you will receive uh, your ID card called residence card. I see. So this is a necessary step to work in Japan. Right. How should we prepare for this in advance? First, you need to decide what type of visa uh, you will apply. Japanese Immigration Authority provides 29 types of uh, visa, and each visa uh, will allow you to engage in specific uh, job. And uh, you need to collect uh, documents required for each, uh, for each visa. You can find a list of documents uh, on the website of uh, Immigration Services Agency. I've heard that acquiring a Japanese work visa is quite difficult. Not necessarily. Uh, the requirement uh, for a work, work visa is not so demanding. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, what, what you need to suffice to get an uh, office worker's work visa is uh, to have a uh, certain college degree with a major relating to your job in Japan, plus a uh, proper amount of salary equal, uh, similar to uh, Japanese uh, people. And uh, I heard uh, that uh, some foreign countries uh, have uh, requirements uh, for visa sponsor organization to carry an classified advertisement to, to find local people before uh, you can uh, apply for a work, work visa. However, uh, Japan does not require such advertisement and uh, the company uh, who wish to sponsor a work visa can apply for a work visa uh, from the beginning.
And even when you do not have a proper uh, degree to be eligible for your work visa, uh, there are uh, several alternatives uh, which enables you to get uh, the work visa. For example, you can use your working career to be eligible for your work visa. Lastly, I'd like to ask about preferential treatment for highly skilled professionals. I think highly skilled professionals such as engineers and academic researchers are interested in working in Japan. What kind of preferential treatment is there? And what about status of residence? The Japanese government has introduced a highly skilled professional visa uh, which can be uh, granted to people with highly skilled or uh, some, spe uh, some special knowledge. You can be granted uh, points based on your educational background or work uh, career or income or qualifications you have. And if you can uh, earn 70 points or more, you are eligible for this highly skilled professional visa. The highly skilled professional visa provides uh, some uh, preferential uh, treatments uh, in terms of your uh, immigration status. For example, uh, highly skilled professional visa uh, shall be always uh, valid for five years, when uh, you usually get only one year uh, visa uh, when you apply for your work visa for the first time. And uh, another advantage uh, is that uh, the requirement uh, for your permanent residence application can be relaxed. Wow. So if you are someone who has a highly professional skill, then you should definitely make use of this. Exactly. So it is, uh, it is advisable to, to check if you are eligible. If you apply for this highly uh, skilled professional visa, uh, you can always get the five years visa. So you can concentrate on your uh, business in Japan uh, without worrying about the period of your visa. Thank you for sharing with us such beneficial information. Could you give us a message for those who are thinking of expanding their business in Japan? The foreign direct investment into Japan is not so restricted and the Japanese government uh, regularly review and amend the regulations uh, for foreign direct investment. In my past experiences, I have never seen any foreign businesses who gave up entering into Japan just because of the uh, harsh regulations of Japan. So uh, please uh, do not hesitate to set up a business uh, in Japan. And when you start procedures, please get advice of experts at JETRO. JETRO is happy to help you in getting the preferential uh, treatments. Thank you very much, Mr. Ida. You're welcome. We hope you understood the important points of establishing and registering a company in Japan. In addition to the company registration and visas video, there are also episodes on tax and human resources management. So please feel free to take a look at these. Jetro has more than 70 overseas offices to support foreign companies entering the Japanese market and developing their business. If you are a foreign company considering expanding your business to Japan or establishing a base in Japan, Please visit your nearest Jetro office or contact us through the inquiry form provided in the description below. Our experienced staff will be happy to guide you through the process. We wish you success in the Japanese market. See you soon.